Thomas and the Runaway Kite. It was a bright blue morning on the island of Sodor. It was the day of the Sodor Kite Festival. Soon, the sky would be full of kites of all shapes and colors. The engines were very excited about the kite festival. Thomas was the most excited of all because Thomas liked kites best of all. Thomas puffed into Brendam Docks. He had a very special special. He was to collect the winner's cup for the kite festival. Thomas gasped when he saw the cup. Oh my, that's the most beautiful cup I've ever seen. Thomas, you must deliver the winner's cup to Knapford Station. Lady Hat will give it to the winner at tea time. Thomas beamed from buffer to buffer. Yes, sir. I will chuff straight there. Thomas puffed proudly. He wanted everyone to see that he was pulling the winner's cup. Thomas pulled up to a junction. High in the sky, above the treetops, he saw a kite. Fizzling fireboxes. What a wonderful kite. I hope I will see it again. Thomas huffed and chuffed to the top of Gordon's Hill. Then he gasped. There's that wonderful kite again. The kite belonged to Sir Topham Hatt's grandchildren. <laughs> they wanted to win the cup at the kite festival. Charlie puffed up. Look at that kite swoop through the air. Look, there's Thomas. Suddenly, a gust of wind pulled at the kite. The kite flew up, 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 and away. Sir Topham Hatt's grandchildren watched. They were very sad. Thomas wanted to help them. Don't be sad. I'll chase after your kite and bring it back to you. This made the children very happy. I'm the fastest engine on Sodor. I can catch up with your kite. I'll help you, Thomas. No, thank you, Charlie. I'm much faster than you. I can chase this kite all by myself. So, Thomas didn't go straight to Knapford with the winner's cup. He chuffed off, chasing Sir Topham Hatt's grandchildren's runaway kite. The wind blew the kite far down the tracks. Thomas whooshed and whooshed. His boiler bubbled. His coal crackled. I must keep up with the runaway kite. I'll puff and I'll huff with all of my might. I'm the fastest engine on Sodor. Then, the wind blew the kite out of sight. Where has the kite gone? Hello, Thomas. You're huffing hard. Hello, Edward. I'm chasing Sir Topham Hatt's grandchildren's kite. How exciting. Can I help? No, thank you, Edward. I'm the fastest engine on Sodor. I can chase their kite all by myself. At last, Thomas caught up with the kite. He was excited. Then, the wind blew the kite another way. Cinders and ashes, come back, Mr. Kite, please. Thomas chased and raced. I must keep up with the runaway kite. I'll puff and I'll huff with all of my might. I'm the fastest engine on Sodor. Then the wind blew the kite up over the bridge. Emily was on the bridge. She saw the kite. She was surprised. Hello, Thomas. Are you chasing that kite? Yes, Emily. It is blown away from Sir Topham Hatt's grandchildren. I've promised I'll catch it. Can I help? No, thank you, Emily. I'm the fastest engine on Sodor. I can chase it all by myself. And Thomas whooshed on under the bridge. Thomas clattered and clacked. I must keep up with the runaway kite. I'll puff and I'll huff with all of my might. I'm the fastest engine on Sodor. What's wrong, Thomas? Your cheeks are as red as James's boiler. I'm chasing that kite. 
Let me help. I can chase it with you. No, thank you. I can chase this kite all by myself. I'm the fastest engine on Sodor. So, Percy chuffed off, and Thomas puffed on. At last, the wind dropped. The kite landed in front of Thomas, near a junction. Thomas was pleased. Bubbling boilers, I've caught up with you now, Mr. Kite. Thomas whooshed across the junction towards the kite. Then there was trouble. Thomas started juddering and jittering. The flame in Thomas's firebox flickered and fizzled out. Thomas had burned all his coal chasing the runaway kite. Oh my! Oh no! I've run out of coal! Then the wind blew again. The kite flew high in the sky and was gone. I can't puff anymore. I can't chase the kite. I'm not the fastest engine on Sodor. I've broken my promise to the children, and I haven't delivered the winner's cup to Knapford Station. Thomas felt terrible. It's all my fault. Suddenly, Thomas heard an engine chuffing around the corner. It was Charlie. What's wrong, Thomas? I ran out of coal trying to chase the kite. I thought you were the fastest engine on Sodor. I'm not. I was silly to think I could catch the kite on my own. Will you help me, Charlie? Of course I will, Thomas. Charlie gave Thomas some of his coal. Soon, Thomas's firebox was burning brightly. Thank you, Charlie. I'm late. I must deliver the winner's cup to Knapford Station. Can you look for the kite, please? With all my huff and chuff, Thomas. So. Thomas puffed to Knapford with the winner's cup. On his way to Knapford, Thomas stopped at a junction. Percy, Emily, and Edward were waiting. You look sad, Thomas. I didn't catch Sir Topham Hatt's grandchildren's kite. Will you all help me? Of course we will, Thomas. Right away. With no delay. Thomas's friends were happy to help him. And Thomas was happy to be helped. Thomas arrived at Knapford Station with the winner's cup. Sir Topham Hatt's grandchildren raced over. Hi, Thomas. They hoped Thomas had found their kite. I haven't found your kite, but all my friends are looking for it now. Come with me. So the children climbed cheerfully on board. Thomas puffed to a junction. Suddenly. The kite flew in front of Thomas. There's the kite. Emily, Percy, Edward, and Charlie chuffed to the junction. The kite danced between them. Then it caught its tail on the signal. Hooray! We've caught the kite. The engines tooted. The children cheered. <laughs> With the help of my friends, we caught the kite. And later that day, at the kite festival, Sir Topham Hatt's grandchildren's kite danced best of all, as the wind blew it high up in the sky, and Thomas smiled and smiled. Double trouble! All the engines were very excited. They chuffed cheerfully and chattered as they clattered along the tracks. Today was Sir Topham Hatt's birthday. And there was to be the grandest birthday party on Sodor. Thomas had a very special special. He was to pick up Sir Topham Hat and Lady Hat for the party. As Thomas approached Maithwaite Station, he gasped. Ahead, he could see Sir Topham Hat already on the platform. Cinders and ashes! I must be late. Thomas pulled into the station. He was worried. I'm sorry, sir. I thought I was early. Sir Topham Hatt turned around. Thomas gasped. <gasps> Sir Topham Hatt had a mustache. Thomas was so surprised he nearly popped a piston. Thomas, my good friend, you're looking perfectly polished today. <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> Sir Topham Hatt chuckled so loudly his top hat wobbled. Thomas was puzzled. Sir Topham Hatt never chuckled so loudly that his top hat wobbled, and Sir Topham Hatt never called Thomas his good friend. 
I know, Thomas. Let's go to the Whispering Woods. It's one of my favorite spots. We have plenty of time before the party. All aboard! Now Thomas was even more puzzled. He wanted to ask about Sir Topham Hatt's new mustache and why he was acting so strangely. But Thomas didn't want to look silly. So he decided not to ask. Thomas pulled away from Maithway Station and chuffed towards the Whispering Woods. Thomas puffed up to the Whispering Woods. Edward was there. Edward had brought children to visit the woods. Then he was to take them to the party. Hello, Edward. Hello, Thomas. You look worried. Thomas was worried. But before he could explain, Sir Topham Hatt climbed down. Marvelous! What fun! Please, sir. Uh, we can't stay long. The children mustn't be late for the party. Oh, party smarty, Thomas. We have plenty of time. You worry too much. And Sir Topham Hatt strode off. Hello, children. Who'd like a game of hide-and-seek? Did Sir Topham Hatt say a game of hide-and-seek? Yes, he did. And Thomas's wheels wobbled with worry. <laughs> Sir Topham Hatt played hide-and-seek for a long time. He was very happy. So were the children. Edward was puzzled. Sir Topham Hatt never plays hide-and-seek. I know. And what's that on his face? A mustache. It just appeared. Today, Sir Topham Hatt doesn't seem like Sir Topham Hatt at all. Just then, Sir Topham Hatt came back. Thomas wanted to ask him if he was feeling all right, but he didn't want to look silly. Thomas knew that silly engines weren't really useful engines, so he didn't ask any questions. We must hurry now, sir. We'll be late. And so will the children. But Sir Topham Hatt wasn't worried. Don't hurry the children, Edward. Let them play. Edward was so surprised his boiler bubbled. Then Sir Topham Hatt jumped aboard Annie and waved to all the children. Thomas's wheels clickety-clacked. He puffed and he huffed along the track. He knew they were late for the party. Thomas stopped at the junction. Suddenly, Sir Topham Hatt jumped out of Annie and climbed up to the signal box. I won't be a moment, Thomas. Thomas was amazed. So was the signalman. Sir Topham Hatt never came into his signal box. Hello there. May I have a turn? Thomas looked up. He saw Sir Topham Hatt pull a lever. <coughs> then Thomas heard Gordon's whistle. Cinders and ashes. Here comes Gordon. Gordon had all the important visitors aboard the express. He was taking them to the party. With a clang and a clatter, the points changed. Gordon and the Express were no longer on the Express track. They were now on a branch line heading away from the party. Thomas heard Sir Topham Hatt whoop for joy. Hooray! Fizzling fireboxes. I must ask Sir Topham Hatt why he's being so strange. But when Sir Topham Hatt came down from the signal box, Thomas didn't say anything. He still didn't want to look silly. What fun! All aboard, Thomas! Thomas raced towards Maithwaite. Lady Hat would be waiting. They were very late. Thomas was worried. First, Sir Topham Hat had a mustache. Next, he wanted to play hide-and-seek with the children. Then he sent Gordon off the express line and away from the party. Hmm. Sir Topham Hat is acting very strangely indeed. Thomas puffed into Maithwaite. The station master was cross. Thomas, you're late. Sir Topham and Lady Hat had to go to the party and Bertie the bus. But Bertie hasn't arrived at the party. Neither have the children or the very important visitors. Thomas was puzzled. If Sir Topham Hat is on Bertie, then who is on board Annie? Just then, Thomas's passengers stepped down. Thomas knew he had to ask a question he hadn't asked before, even if he looked silly. Excuse me, Sir Topham. You don't quite seem yourself today. Is everything all right? Thomas's passenger beamed brightly. Yes, Thomas, but I'm not Sir Topham Hat. I'm Sir Loam Hat, Sir Topham's brother. Thomas was amazed. That explained everything. 
but he wished now that he had asked this question earlier. Now there was no time to waste if he wanted to be a really useful engine. Birdie must have broken down. We must find him right away. Sir Topham Hatt's brother was very excited. Hooray! Another game of hide and seek! Now Thomas was stern. No, Sir Loam Hatt. I have to work hard and quickly. Otherwise, your brother's party will be spoiled. So Loam boarded Annie, and Thomas puffed away. Thomas found Birdie the bus. Smoke billowed from his engine. Birdie looked very unhappy. So did Sir Topham and Lady Hat. Thomas, where have you been? Just then, Sir Topham Hat's brother stepped down from Annie. Sir Topham Hat sighed. Oh no, Loam. Have you been up to your old tricks again? Absolutely right, Topham. I've been having a wonderful time with Thomas. Sir Topham Hat didn't think this was funny at all. Loam, you have caused confusion and delay. We must hurry. Thomas delivered Sir Topham Hat, his brother, and Lady Hat to the party just in time. The party looked grand. But Thomas couldn't stay. He had work to do. First, Thomas chuffed to the Whispering Woods. Edward was very happy to see Thomas. Go straight to the party with the children, Edward. Sir Topham Hat is waiting. It was his brother, Sir Loam, who was playing hide and seek. Next, Thomas found Gordon. Gordon was huffing and puffing as slowly as a snail down a rickety branch line. Ugh, the indignity. Hurry, Gordon, to the next express line. Race like a rocket to the party. That made Gordon very happy. At last, Thomas chuffed back to the party. Edward and Gordon were already there. What a wonderful party! And it was. Everyone was laughing. Then Thomas and his friends heard something very extraordinary. Sir Topham Hatt chuckled even louder than his brother. And that made Thomas happiest of all. Percy's Parcel. It was a beautiful day on the island of Sodor. The sun was shining in a bright blue sky and all the engines were very excited. There was to be a special party. It was Sir Topham Hatt's mother's birthday. Sir Topham Hatt arrived at Tidmouth Sheds. He had a special for Thomas. Thomas, you are to collect passengers for the party from Brendam Docks. Thomas was excited. Yes, sir. Percy hoped that Sir Topham Hatt had a special for him, but he didn't. Don't worry, Percy. I'm sure you'll have a special later. But Percy still felt sad. Mavis rolled by and stopped. She could see Percy was unhappy. What's wrong, Percy? I don't have a special. Everybody else does. Don't worry, Percy. I'm sure Sir Topham Hatt will come back with a special special just for you. And when he does, be sure to tell me all about it. Just then, Sir Topham Hatt did come back. Percy was surprised. Percy, you have the most important special of all. You must collect my mother's special birthday parcel from Brendam Docks. Then you must deliver it to the birthday party at Knapford Station. Percy beamed from buffer to buffer. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Percy was excited. Mavis was right. Percy puffed into Brendam Docks. He gasped. The parcel was the most special parcel he had ever seen. Percy was so proud, his firebox fizzed. I must show Mavis straight away. She will be very proud of me. Thomas was at Brendam. He was pleased for his friend. Percy, you have the most important special of all. I know. I'm going to show Mavis my special special straight away. But. Don't you have to go to Knapford Station? Percy didn't want to listen to Thomas. I have plenty of time to puff to Knapford. First, I will show Mavis my special special. So, Percy set off for the quarry as quickly as he could puff. 
Percy steamed into the quarry. He looked for Mavis. Mavis was busy. Rocky was loading heavy crates onto freight cars, and Mavis was shunting them. It was hard work. Hello, Mavis. Hello, Percy. Look at my special special. I'm sorry, Percy. I can't stop now. I'm too busy. Don't worry, Mavis. I'll wait. Look out, Percy! But it was too late. Oh, no! Rocky dropped his heavy load of slate. Everyone was lost in a thick black cloud of slate dust. At last, the dust cleared. Mavis, Rocky, and Percy were covered in thick gray dust, and so was Percy's special special. Percy was upset. Bubbling boilers! Look at the birthday parcel! What am I going to do? Percy thought as hard as he could. At last, an idea flew into his funnel. I'll go to the wash down. My special special will be cleaned there as good as new. Percy, shouldn't you go straight to the party at Knapford? Percy didn't want to listen to Rocky. I'll go to Knapford Station as soon as I've shown Mavis my special special. I still have plenty of time. So Percy steamed quickly away. Percy huffed and puffed to the washdown. James was already there, having a polish. My, my, Percy, whatever happened to you? Percy felt very silly. I'd like a very good wash, please. The workmen got straight to work. Water and soapy bubbles sprayed everywhere. Soon, Percy was gleaming green again, but his special special looked terrible. Bubbling boilers! The birthday parcel is wetter than wet. What am I going to do? Percy thought as quickly as he could. At last, another idea flew into his funnel. I'll take my special special to the Sodor Steamworks. Victor will help me. His hot air blowers will dry the birthday parcel. Percy, shouldn't you go straight to the party at Knapford? Percy didn't want to listen to James. I'll go to Knapford Station as soon as I've shown Mavis my special special. I'm sure I still have plenty of time. And Percy chuffed quickly away. Percy raced like the wind to the steamworks. Percy looked for Victor at the steamworks. He couldn't find him anywhere, but he did find a workman. I'd like to be dried as quickly as you can, please. The workman was happy to help. Hot air whooshed and whirred all over Percy, and all over his special special. Soon the workman had finished. Percy felt very pleased until he saw the birthday parcel. Wobbling wheels! It's all crinkled and crumpled. What am I going to do? Percy thought as hard as he could. But this time, no ideas flew into his funnel at all. So Percy steamed sadly away. Percy clickety clacked slowly along the track. Now he didn't want to show Mavis his special special. He had spoiled Sir Topham Hatt's mother's birthday parcel, and he couldn't go to the party at Nadford now. Percy didn't want anyone to see him, so he chuffed into a siding to hide. He felt terrible. Then he heard Mavis and Edward chuff to the junction. Hello, Mavis. You look happy. I am. I've just picked up these brand new crates. Suddenly, Percy stopped feeling sad, and he started to listen very carefully. Brand new crates. Victor had just delivered them to the steamworks. I've never pulled brand new crates before. Goodbye, Edward. A brand new crate is just what I need. Percy pumped his pistons and puffed away to the steamworks. Hello, Victor. Hello, my friend. How can I help you? I've just seen Mavis with brand new crates. May I have one, please? Well, what for? To put my birthday parcel in. Well, of course you can, Percy. That made Percy very happy. Thank you, Victor. Soon, a new bright red crate was sitting on Percy's flatbed. 
This will be the grandest parcel Sir Topham Hatt's mother has ever been given. I must hurry now. Everyone will be waiting. Thank you, Victor. And Percy puffed proudly out of the steamworks. Sir Topham Hatt and his mother were waiting at Knapford Station. Sir Topham Hatt was cross. Then Percy puffed in. The brand new bright red birthday parcel looked wonderful. Everyone cheered. Happy birthday, ma'am. Here's your very special birthday present. Sir Topham Hatt's mother beamed, and even Sir Topham Hatt smiled. As the workmen opened the crate, everyone wanted to see what the present was. Sir Topham Hatt's mother was most excited of all. Then everyone gasped. It was a beautiful portrait of Sir Topham Hatt's mother. Oh, my, Bertram, what a wonderful surprise. I'm very happy. <coughs> That's the most special special I've ever seen, Percy. Percy smiled from footplate to fender. He was sure he was the happiest engine of Henry's good deeds. There are lots of beautiful birds on the island of Sodor. The engines know their names and their songs. One day, the engines were especially excited. A new bird had been seen on the island. Sir Topham Hatt arrived at Tidmouth Sheds. He had important news. The Sodor Warbler has arrived back on the island. Very few people have ever seen this bird, so a lot of visitors will be coming to our island. You will all be very busy taking them to spot the bird. Remember your passenger cars at all times, and remember not to frighten the warbler. Henry was worried for the warbler. Do you think the Sodor warbler will be scared of engines? No, Henry, not if you're really useful. And I need you to be really useful. Yes, sir. You must deliver a nesting pole to Bluff's Cove. Percy was puzzled. Um, what's a nesting pole? It's a tall pole with a shelf on top. Birds build their nests on it. Percy liked this idea. Do you understand, Henry? Yes, sir. I will deliver the pole straight away. Good. We hope the Sodor Warbler will make its home here once more. That's a very exciting special, Henry. Henry was happy. He puffed away proudly. Later, Henry clickety-clacked along the track. Ahead, he could see Thomas with Annie and Clarabelle. Thomas had stopped. That's strange. Henry shoved slowly up to Thomas. Is anything wrong, Thomas? No, Henry. I'm letting Farmer McCall cross with his sheep. Henry could see the sheep tripping and tapping across the tracks. Thomas, you helped me. That's a good deed. Well done. You're welcome, Farmer McCall. Thomas chuffed away cheerfully. Henry puffed and puzzled. I would like to help someone. They will call it a good deed, and they will say, well done, Henry. This made Henry feel very happy. I'm sure I can deliver the nesting pole and do good deeds. So Henry huffed happily on. Soon, Henry saw Farmer Trotter's pink pigs. They were snuffling and sniffing sadly at the side of the track. Hmm, those pigs don't look very happy. Then, Henry saw that the pigs were looking at the muddy field on the other side of the tracks. I know what's wrong. Those pigs want to roll in the muddy field. If I stop here, those pigs can cross safely. They won't be scared anymore. So, Henry stopped. And the pigs tripped and trotted across the tracks. Soon, the pigs weren't pink anymore. They were brown, muddy, and very happy. Farmer Trotter wasn't happy at all. I wanted pink pigs to take to the county fair. Henry was sorry. Oh dear, Farmer Trotter is cross. 
I didn't help at all. Suddenly, an idea flew into Henry's funnel. I'll reverse back down the track. Then the pigs will have more room to cross. Henry pumped his pistons. His wheels whirred. He puffed steam and he chuffed backwards. This should help, Farmer Trotter. But it didn't help. The pigs were scared by Henry's steam and the whir of his wheels. They scattered and clattered into the apple crates. The apples rolled everywhere. This made the pigs very happy. They munched and scrunched the rosy red apples. But now they wouldn't move from the tracks. That made Farmer Trotter even more cross. Bust my buffers. My idea wasn't a good deed at all. Just then, Thomas puffed up on the down line. Annie and Clarabelle were full of visitors to see the Sodor Warbler. Cinders and ashes. How am I going to puff through? The Sodor Warbler has been spotted in the Fenland Fields. I'm in a hurry. I'm sorry, Thomas. I was trying to help Farmer Trotter. I'm sure I can help you. I'll take your visitors to the Fenland Fields. We'll be there in good time. Thomas thought this was a good idea. Thank you, Henry. The visitors were surprised. They stepped and scurried through the pigs to Henry's passenger car. Henry felt pleased. I'm sure this is a good deed, and I'm sure I still have time to deliver the nesting pole. Henry puffed and huffed his hardest all the way to the Fenland Fields. Here we are. Watch out for the warbler. The visitors were very excited. They opened the carriage doors carefully. They didn't want to scare the Sodor Warbler away. Henry felt very happy. At last, I've been helpful. I've done a good deed. Henry tooted a loud goodbye. Then there was trouble. A colorful bird flapped and flew from a tree high into the sky and away. It was the Sodor Warbler. The visitors moaned and groaned. Fizzling fireboxes! The bird was scared of my loud whistle. Henry steamed sadly away. I wanted to help the pigs. I wanted to help Farmer Trotter. I wanted to help the visitors. But I haven't helped anybody. I've done no good deeds. And I haven't delivered the nesting pole. Henry felt terrible. Henry huffed towards Bluff's Cove. He had to deliver the nesting pole. I don't think anyone is ever going to say, well done, Henry, to me. Henry waited at a junction. His wheels wobbled with worry. Now I'm sure I'll be late with the nesting pole. Sir Topham Hat will be cross with me. Oh dear, oh dear. Suddenly, a colorful bird flew from a tree. Henry was too sad to smile at the bird. The bird landed on Henry's buffer. At least I can give that bird a rest and a ride. So, Henry and the beautiful bird chuffed on towards Bluff's Cove. Henry puffed to the halt. A lot of visitors were waiting. They were hoping to see the Sodo Warbler. I hope they'll be pleased that I have delivered the nesting pole. But the visitors weren't just pleased. They were amazed. They smiled and pointed and took out their cameras. Henry was surprised. Oh, the visitors seem very pleased to see me. I can't think why. After all, no one has said, well done, Henry. Well done, Henry. You have brought the Sodor Warbler to us. Hooray for Henry. Henry blinked and blushed. The bird I carried on my buffer was the Sodor Warbler. Then Thomas arrived with more visitors. Well done, Henry. Henry was so proud, his firebox fizzed and his boiler bubbled. And this time, I wasn't even trying to do a good deed. Soon the nesting pole was up. The Sodor Warbler looked snug and sleepy in its nest at the top. I think our friend likes its new home. Welcome home, Mr. Warbler. <laughs> and well done, Henry. <sighs> Hero helps out. 
The engines on the island of Sodor like to be busy. They heave and haul. They huff and puff. And most of all, they like to please Sir Topham Hatt. One morning, Hero chuffed into Knapford Station. There was hustle and bustle, noise and steam. It was another busy day at Knapford. Then Sir Topham Hatt hurried onto the platform without his hat. Hero gasped. <gasps> sir, good morning, sir. I hope the day finds you well, sir. The day finds me with much too much to do, Hero. That's how the day finds me. I can see, sir. What are you staring at, Hero? Nothing, sir. Just your hat, sir. Excuse me. Edward puffed in. Hello, Hero. You look worried. Not at all. Then there was trouble. Blistering boilers. In all my long years, I've never seen that before. <clears throat> Hero was worried for Sir Topham Hat. Sir, can I help you, sir? It's a very busy day, Hero. I have to visit the Thin Controller. I must talk with him about the railways. Hero knew this was important. I understand, sir. I must be away from Knapford. Of course, sir. Now, Edward was worried. Sir? Not now, Edward. Edward was still worried. I have to pick up visitors from Brendam Docks. I don't know where to take them. Hero didn't know where the visitors should go either, but he didn't want to bother Sir Topham Hatt. Then, an idea flew into his funnel. Take them to the hills, Edward. They will enjoy the hills. So, Edward puffed away to Brendam Docks and the hills. Hero felt happy. He was master of the railway as he liked to be. Hero puffed up to the water tower. Thomas was there. He was taking on water. Hello, Thomas. Hello, Hero. Where are you going, Thomas? To Knapford. I must ask Sir Topham Hatt where to take these crates of benches and tables. Hero still didn't want to bother Sir Topham Hatt. Sir Topham Hatt is busy now, Thomas. He will tell you where to go later. You have time to visit your friend, Farmer Trotter. So Thomas chuffed cheerfully away to Farmer Trotter's farm. Hero was happy. He was helping Sir Topham Hatt. Hero steamed up to a junction. Percy was there. He had a flatbed full of quacking ducks. Hello, Percy. How are you? Percy was worried. Hello, Hero. These ducks are very noisy. They want to go swimming. I have to find Sir Topham Hatt. He will tell me where I must take them for a swim. Hero still didn't want to bother Sir Topham Hatt. Sir Topham Hatt is very busy, Percy. Perhaps you could puff to the Finland. The ducks will be happy there. Thank you, Hero. Hero was happy. Helping Sir Topham Hatt was the best job he had ever had. Hero huffed happily to a crossing. Sir Topham Hatt was there. Hero! While I was with the Thin Controller, I heard worrying news. Farmer McCall is waiting for his ducks. There are no tables or benches for the concert at tea time. And Edward is late for a concert at the town hall. <gasps> Hero gasped. 
Sir Topham Hatt was cross. Sir Topham Hatt was cross with him, and it was all his fault. Hero felt worse than ever. He had been master of the railway, and now he was master of the muddle. I'm sorry, sir. I'm very sorry, sir. I knew you were very busy. I wanted to help, so I told the engines what to do. I didn't want to bother you, sir. <gasps> Sir Topham Hatt gasped. You didn't want to bother me. I am controller of the railway. Nothing is more important to me than my engines being really useful. Hero gulped. I know that now, sir. I'm not master of the railway. I'm master of the muddle. I can put this right. Please give me time. And Hero wished quickly away. Hero found Edward in the hills. Hello, Hero. My visitors are very happy. Good, Edward. But now, you must take the visitors to Knapford Station. Sir Topham Hutt will give you your orders. I thought we weren't to bother Sir Topham Hatt, Hero. I was wrong, Edward. Sir Topham Hutt didn't want that at all. And Hero steamed swiftly away. Hero whooshed up to Farmer Trotter's farm. Hello, Thomas. Hello, Hero. I'm having a wonderful time with the piglets. Good, Thomas, my friend. But now, you must puff as fast as you can to Knapford. Sir Topham Hatt is waiting with orders for you. I thought we weren't to bother Sir Topham Hatt, Hero. I was wrong, Thomas. Sir Topham Hatt didn't want that at all. Bye, Hero. Hero clickety-clacked onto the Fenland track. Percy was there. The ducks were swimming happily. Hello, Percy. Hello, Hero. The ducks are very happy. I'm pleased to hear that, Percy. But now, you must take the ducks to Knapfoot. Sir Topham Hatt has orders for you. I thought we weren't to bother Sir Topham Hatt. I was wrong, Percy. Sir Topham Hatt didn't want that at all. But how can I get the ducks back into their crates? I will help you, Percy. Hero blew his whistle. It sounded like a duck quacking. The ducks flapped and flew into their crates. Thank you, Hero. Later, Sir Topham Hatt had given his orders to the engines. Now, you all know what you have to do. Chuff away and be really useful. Hero puffed forward. And what shall I do, sir? You, Hero, will do what you have always done. You will be helpful, Hero. Helping me. And nothing could have made Hero happier. The early bird. On the island of Sodor, all of the engines on Sir Topham Hatt's railway are busy. Gordon pulls the express. Percy delivers the mail. And Thomas puffs and shoves cheerfully on his branch line. One morning, Thomas's fireman fanned his firebox ready for work. Thomas saw that his best friend Percy wasn't there. Good morning, James. Have you seen Percy? No, I have too much to do to see Percy. Then, Sir Topham had arrived. Thomas, Percy has popped a piston. He has to go to the steamworks to be fixed. Percy won't be able to deliver the mail tomorrow morning. You must do it for him. Thomas was excited. He had never delivered the mail before. He tooted his whistle loudly. Yes, sir. I've always wanted to deliver the mail. Make sure you do a good job, Thomas. Of course I will, sir. Don't worry, sir. Then Thomas puffed proudly away to his branch line. Thomas stopped at a crossing. Gordon was there. Percy is being fixed. 
Tomorrow, I'm going to deliver the mail run for him. Percy's mail run? Have you asked Percy how to do it? Don't worry, Gordon. I know all about delivering the mail. <laughs> do you indeed? Then the gate opened, and Thomas puffed quickly away. Thomas worked hard all day. That night, he went to see Percy at the steamworks. Percy didn't look happy. Is your piston fixed, Percy? No, it's still broken. Don't worry. I'm going to do your mail run tomorrow. Thank you, Thomas. Shall I tell you what to do? I know what to do, Percy. Now, I have to go to sleep. I shall be up very early. Well, if you're sure, Thomas. Very sure, Percy. I have to go back to Tidmouth now. I need lots of sleep. Goodbye. Percy watched as Thomas chuffed away. The next morning, Thomas woke up very early. He felt very proud to be pulling the mail trucks. There wasn't a peep to be heard as Thomas chuffed across the island. Everyone was fast asleep. First, Thomas puffed to the quarry. I must let the quarry manager know that the mail is here. Thomas was excited. He blew his whistle very loudly. And then he chuffed cheerfully away. Thomas hadn't seen that his loud whistle had woken up Mavis. <sighs> Who's making that noise? Next, Thomas chuffed to the docks. I must let the dock manager know that the mail is here. Thomas was excited. He blew his whistle even louder. <sighs> and then he chuffed cheerfully away. What Thomas hadn't seen was that his good morning whistle had woken Cranky up. <sighs> Who woke me up? This is fun! Lastly, Thomas steamed into the steamworks. I must let the steamworks manager know that the mail is here. Thomas was so excited, he blew his whistle louder than ever. Oh. And then he huffed happily away. What Thomas hadn't seen was that he had woken Victor and Kevin up. Oh, what's that noise, boss? Uh, who knows, Kevin, who knows? Some early bird. Thomas worked hard all morning. Everywhere Thomas went, he blew his whistle loudly. Delivering the mail is fun! Soon, Thomas had delivered all the mail. It was time for him to puff back to Tidmouth Sheds for a rest. As Thomas passed through the quarry, he saw Mavis. Her freight cars were being loaded with slate. Then there was trouble. Mavis hadn't lined up her freight cars under the hopper. Slate spilled everywhere. That's strange. Mavis never makes mistakes. What Thomas didn't see was that Mavis was fast asleep under the hopper. That's why she had put the freight cars in the wrong place. Next, Thomas passed through the docks. Cranky was unloading some big crates from a ship. Then there was trouble. Cranky dropped the crates. They fell to the ground with a smash and a crash. That's strange. Cranky never makes mistakes. What Thomas didn't see was that Cranky had fallen fast asleep. That's why he had dropped the crates. Thomas pulled into Tidmouth's sheds. He wanted to tell Percy all about the mail delivery, but Percy wasn't there. Sir Topham Hatt was there. He was cross. 
Someone woke Mavis up too early by tooting too loudly on their whistle. Then someone woke up Cranky at the docks and Victor at the steamworks. Now they have all made silly mistakes. Thomas knew he had woken everyone up with his cheerful whistle. He felt terrible. I'm very sorry, sir. It was me. Then, Thomas, as Percy is still not fixed, you must do a better job tomorrow. I will, sir. I promise, sir. Then Gordon arrived. He had heard all about Thomas's trouble with the mail run. You were right, Gordon. Delivering the mail is a hard job. I should have asked Percy what to do. And this time, I will. That evening, Thomas visited Percy at the steamworks. He asked him all about delivering the mail, and Percy told him all about being quiet. The next morning, Thomas set off early, pulling the mail cars. He stopped at the quarry. This time, he didn't blow his whistle. He puffed very quietly so that he didn't wake Mavis. Next, Thomas stopped at the docks. He didn't blow his whistle here either, and he didn't wake Cranky up. Lastly, Thomas puffed into the steamworks. He dropped off the mail, and he didn't blow his whistle once. Victor stayed fast asleep. But Percy had woken up early to see his best friend, Thomas. Well done, Thomas. You did everything right. Thank you, Percy. Now I know the most important thing about delivering the mail. You have to do it quietly. Percy was so happy for his friend that he wanted to toot out loud. Then he looked at Thomas. Thomas had fallen fast asleep. Sleep well, Thomas. And Thomas snored the sleep of an engine who had done a very good job, the Lion of Sodor. It was a beautiful day on the island of Sodor. The sky was blue and the sun was shining brightly. Thomas was chuffing cheerfully to Brendam Docks. He felt very happy. Thomas had to collect a special special. But he didn't know what it was. Hello, Cranky. Is my special ready? Yes, it is. The mayor is waiting for it at Knapford. You must puff very carefully. Thomas was puzzled. What is it, Cranky? It's the Lion of Sodor. Cinders and ashes. How exciting! I promise to take extra special care of it. I've never carried a real live lion before. When Cranky heard this, he was surprised. No, Thomas, the Lion of Sodor isn't a... But Thomas was too excited to listen to Cranky. He was already puffing proudly out of the docks. Thomas puffed happily along. Then he met Henry. Hello, Thomas. You look happy. What's your special? It's a lion. Bust my buffers. That's exciting. I only have sticky syrup to deliver. Suddenly, an idea flew into Thomas's funnel. I promised to take extra special care of my lion. I think he might really like sticky syrup. Could I have some for him, Henry? Of course. Thomas's engineer poured some sticky syrup into the lion's crate. Thank you, Henry. I have to hurry now. The mayor is waiting for the Lion of Sodor. Henry was surprised. Fizzling fireboxes! Thomas has made a mistake! Stop, Thomas! The Lion of Sodor isn't a... But Thomas didn't stop. And he didn't listen. Next, Thomas met Edward. Hello, Thomas. You look happy. What's your special? It's a lion. Flat my funnel. How exciting. I only have to deliver fresh fish. I think my lion would really like fresh fish. May I have some for him, Edward? Of course. 
So Thomas's driver put some fresh fish into the lion's crate. Thank you, Edward. I must hurry now. The mayor is waiting for the Lion of Sodor. Edward was surprised. <gasps> Clattering coaches. Stop, Thomas. The Lion of Sodor isn't a... But Thomas didn't stop. And he didn't listen. Then Thomas saw Toby. Hello, Thomas. You look happy. What's your special? It's a lion. Buff, my boiler, how exciting. I only have straw in my freight cars. I'm sure my lion would really like some soft straw to lie on. May I have some for him, Toby? Of course. So Thomas's driver put some soft straw into the lion's crate. Thank you, Toby. I really have to hurry. The mayor will be waiting for the Lion of Sodor. Toby was surprised. Uh-oh, trembling trucks. Stop, Thomas. The Lion of Sodor isn't a... But Thomas didn't stop, and he didn't listen. Thomas's pistons pumped and his wheels whirred. He couldn't wait to deliver his lion. He chuffed his hardest and raced on towards Knapford Station. At last, Thomas puffed proudly into Napford. Sir Topham Hatt was there. So were the other engines. I'm very excited, Thomas. This is a big day. The Lion of Sodor is here. Thomas was uncoupled from the flatbed, and he pulled away to join the other engines. The workmen carefully opened the lion's crate. Then the engines gasped. The Lion of Sodor wasn't a real lion at all. It was a statue. And now it was covered in sticky syrup, fresh fish, and straw. Sir Topham Hatt was cross. Thomas, this is a terrible mess. Gordon and James <laughs> laughed, and Thomas felt very silly. I'm sorry. I thought I had a real lion in my crate. I wanted to take extra special care of it. I didn't know the Lion of Sodor was a statue. So Sir Topham had told Thomas all about the Lion of Sodor, and the other engines listened carefully. So you see, Thomas, it was the most famous statue on Sodor. Then it broke. This is the shiny new statue we have been waiting for. The mayor is coming at tea time, and now look at it. I'll make sure it's clean, sir. I promise the Lion of Sodor will be shiny and new again in no time. Very well, Thomas. Thomas still felt very silly. Cheer up, Thomas. I didn't know the Lion of Sodor was a statue either. It all happened a long, long time ago. Not many engines remember that time. We tried to tell you, but you didn't stop. I'm sorry, Henry. I should have listened. Now I must hurry. I must get the Lion of Sodor cleaned right away. Why don't you take it to the washdown? This time, Thomas listened. What a good idea. Thank you, Henry. Thomas was coupled to the flatbed, and he chuffed quickly away. Thomas took the Lion of Sodor to the washdown. Soon, the sticky mess was washed off. That looks much better, Thomas. But now the statue isn't shiny. Take it to the steamworks, Thomas. They'll polish it until it sparkles and shines. This time, Thomas listened. Thank you, Edward. That's a very good idea. Victor will know just what to do. And Thomas puffed quickly away. Thomas took the Lion of Sodor to the steamworks. Workmen polished the statue until it shined and sparkled, just as Edward had said. The Lion of Sodor looks much better now, Thomas. But it's nearly tea time. The mayor will soon be at Knapford, and it's a long way. Take the track by the windmill. That'll get you there in time. This time, Thomas listened. Thank you, Toby. That's a good idea. 
Thomas took the shortcut past the windmill. He huffed and puffed as fast as his pistons could pump towards Knapford. Children cheered and passengers waved as Thomas chuffed by. Everyone wanted to see the Lion of Sodor, and everyone wanted Thomas to stop. I can't stop now. I mustn't be late. The mayor will be at Knapford, and he won't wait. And Thomas whooshed on his way. Thomas puffed proudly into Knapford Station. The mayor had just arrived. He was delighted to see the new Lion of Sodor. The statue shined and sparkled in the sun. Well done, Thomas. This is the finest statue I've ever seen. And the cleanest! <laughs> Everyone cheered. And Thomas smiled from footplate to fender. Time for a story. It was a beautiful day on the island of Sodor. The sun was shining and the birds were singing. Thomas had worked hard all morning. He tooted happily to the children as he chuffed back to Tidmouth Chase. Sir Topham Hatt was waiting. He had an important special. This afternoon, there is to be a special story time for the children at the library. I need an engine to collect the new storybooks from Maithwaite Station and take them to the library. Thomas wished his hardest that he would be given the special. Listening to stories with the children was his favorite thing to do. Thomas, you will deliver the special. Make sure the books are at the library on time. Thomas was excited. Yes, sir. And Thomas chuffed cheerfully away. Thomas puffed fast along the tracks. I mustn't be late for story time. I'll chuff and I'll puff to be there on time. Thomas steamed into Maithwaite Station. Hello, Thomas. I'm here to collect the new storybooks. We'll have your freight cars ready in two toots of a whistle, Thomas. Thomas saw the storybooks piled high in the two freight cars. There were red books, green books, and blue books. There were big books, small books, square books, and even round books. They look wonderful. Soon, Thomas was coupled up to the freight cars. I must hurry. I have to deliver the storybooks to the library on time. Thomas was very excited. He pumped his pistons and puffed quickly out of the station. Thomas didn't wait for the books to be covered. Thomas steamed quickly along the track. I mustn't be late for story time. I'll chuff and I'll puff to be there on time. The books began to jiggle and joggle, but Thomas didn't notice. Thomas puffed fast towards the junction. He could see the signal ahead was red. I don't want to stop. The children are waiting for their special story time. Then an idea flew into his funnel. I can take the branch line. I know there aren't any junctions on that. So, Thomas puffed quickly down the branch line. Thomas felt very pleased. He chuffed faster and faster, and the books jiggled and joggled more and more. But Thomas didn't notice. I mustn't be late for story time. I'll chuff and I'll puff to be there on time. Thomas raced round the bend. Ahead, there was a sign for works on the track. Oh, bother! I'm sure the works on the tracks won't stop me. So, Thomas puffed faster and faster. Then there was trouble. 
Workers were mending the broken track. The broken track was very bumpy. Thomas bumped and jumped. The books jiggled and joggled. Then Thomas hit the biggest bump of all. Whoa! Cinders and ashes! The freight cars bounced high in the air. They crashed and bashed. They clattered and shattered down to the tracks. Thomas put on his brakes. The books flew high and wide through the air and landed all over Farmer McCall's field. Oh, my! The freight cars are broken. The storybooks are all over the field. And the children now won't have their special story time. And it's all my fault. I was in such a hurry to be on time, I didn't want to wait. I should have waited for the books to be covered. And I shouldn't have taken the bumpy branch line. Oh, dear. <sighs> Fizzling fireboxes. What am I going to do? Thomas looked at the storybooks. The sun was shining on them. The books looked even redder and greener and bluer than they had in the freight cars. The storybooks look so pretty in this field. I wish the children could see them. Then an idea flew into his funnel. I'll bring the children to the storybooks. They can have a picnic story time in the sunshine. That really will be special. So Thomas puffed off to collect the children. First, I must collect Annie and Clarabelle. Victor and Kevin were busy at work as Thomas chuffed into the Sodor Steamworks. Hello, Victor. I'm here to collect Annie and Clarabelle. I'm going to take the children to a special picnic story time in the sunshine. That's a wonderful idea, my friend. The children will like that. They always have their best time with you, Thomas. Thomas was pleased Victor and Kevin liked his idea. Later, Thomas huffed happily out of the steamworks with Annie and Clarabelle. Thomas puffed proudly up to the library at the town hall. The children were waiting. They were very surprised to see Annie and Clarabelle instead of cars of storybooks. Today, I'm taking you to an extra special story time. It's a picnic story time in the sunshine. All aboard! <laughs> the children had never had a picnic story time. They thought it was a wonderful idea. Thomas blew his whistle and chuffed cheerfully away. Thomas puffed towards the junction. This time, Thomas waited. Then he took the branch line back to Farmer McCall's field. Thomas chuffed slowly and carefully up to Farmer McCall's field. Here we are, the picnic story time special. The children cheered. They could see all the different colored books in the field. They were very excited. This was the best story time ever. Thomas watched as the children ran onto the field. They each picked up a book and their teacher began to read with them. This is a story, children, all about a little boy. A little boy who didn't like waiting. He didn't like waiting because he thought he'd miss out on all the good things. But then he found out that good things are worth waiting for. As the story began, Thomas looked at all the happy children. He smiled his biggest smile. The children's picnic story time really is worth waiting for. Buzzy Bees. It was a fine summer morning on the island of Sodor. The sun was shining, the birds sang. 
the flowers bloomed, and Thomas clickety-clacked along the track to Brendam Docks. Thomas's good friend Hero was unloading at Brendam Docks. Good morning, Hero. Sir Topham Hatt tells me I have a special special today for Farmer Trotter. Good morning, my friend. Yes, you do. Look. Thomas gasped. Flatten my funnel. They look like small white wooden houses. Who lives in them? Bees, my good friend. Lots and lots of bees. Their houses are called hives. Inside the hives, the bees are very busy making honey. This made Thomas excited. Sir Topham Hatt always has honey on his crumpets. I'll puff as fast as I can to deliver the beehives to Farmer Trotter. Suddenly, Hero was stern. Thomas, chuff slowly and smoothly. Take the truck through the woods. Then the bees will rest. You have to look after bees very carefully. Don't worry, Hero. I will. They'll be happy with me. Hero smiled. Very well. I have to deliver these crates. Then I must pick up some flowers from Farmer McCall. I will visit the bees when I've finished. Hero steamed slowly away. Thomas was coupled up to the beehives. Off we go, bees. Thomas puffed proudly to a junction. Ahead, he saw the track through the woods. The other track ran past a field full of flowers and bright sunshine. The field with flowers is much prettier than the woods. I'm sure the bees would like that better. So, Thomas didn't take the track through the wood as Hero had told him to. Thomas huffed happily along. Buzzy bees are busy bees, and busy bees make honey. Buzzy bees are happy bees when it's warm and sunny. Suddenly, there was a buzzing and a bizzing. Thomas applied his brakes. Bust my buffers, what's that? Thomas looked over to the field. His bees were everywhere. They buzzed busily, flying from flower to flower. Thomas was surprised. No. Come back, bees. Come back to your hives. The bees weren't listening to Thomas. They were too busy buzzing in the field. Thomas tried again. Please come back, bees. We'll be late for Farmer Trotter. But still, the bees weren't listening to Thomas. Fizzling fireboxes. I can't take the beehives to Farmer Trotter empty. Then, an idea flew into Thomas's funnel. The bees like flowers. I will chuff my hardest to Farmer McCall's and pick up the flat bed of flowers. Then, the bees will buzz around my flowers and back to their hives. So, Thomas was uncoupled from his flatbed. Then, he steamed swiftly away. Thomas arrived at Farmer McCall's farm. He saw the flatbed of flowers. I'm sure Hero won't mind if I borrow his flowers. I'll bring them back as soon as the bees are in their hives again. And Thomas huffed happily back to the field. The bees were still buzzing busily from flower to flower in the field. Then, they saw Thomas's flowery flatbed. The buzzy bees left the field and buzzed all around Thomas. They flew into his funnel. They buzzed his boiler and whizzed his wheels. Trembling tracks? This flatbed of flowers wasn't a good idea. Go away, bees, please. Buzz into your hives and make honey. But the bees weren't listening to Thomas. They were too busy buzzing. I must race like the wind. Then maybe the bees will be blown off my buffers and fly back to their hives. So Thomas pumped his pistons and raced away. 
But the bees didn't mind the wind on their wings. They flew round Thomas like a buzzing cloud. Thomas chuffed and puffed to a siding. Very well, bees. If you won't leave me, I will leave you. Thomas was uncoupled from his flatbed of flowers, and he clickety-clacked away down the track. Now the buzzy bees won't bother me. They're too busy making honey for Sir Topham Hatt's tea. Thomas chuffed to a junction. Hero was there. Thomas was surprised to see his friend. Hello, Hero. You look puzzled. I am, Thomas. Farmer McCall's flowers have disappeared, and you have still not delivered the bees to Farmer Trotter. He's waiting and worried. Thomas looked at his wise friend, Hero. He hadn't looked after the bees. He hadn't looked after their hives, and he hadn't taken the woodland track. But he had taken Hero's flowers. Hero, I have been very silly. I have been everything you told me not to be. But now I will do everything you told me to do. Please wait for me here. I will bring you back your flowers. Thomas's wheels started to whir, and his boiler started to bubble. Thomas had a lot to do. Thomas puffed back to the flatbed of flowers. The bees were still buzzing, but Thomas didn't mind. Follow me, bees. I'll take you back to your hives. And Thomas weeshed away to the flatbed of beehives. Farmer Trotter is waiting for you, bees. You will like living on his farm. Then Thomas chuffed carefully away and took the track through the woods. The woods were deep and dark. The bees felt cold. It's time to go home, all you busy bees. It's time to make honey in the shade of the trees. And the busy bees buzzed into their hives. Farmer Trotter was waiting for Thomas. He was very pleased to see his new beehives. Thank you, Thomas. But why have you brought me all those flowers? They're not for you, Farmer Trotter. Hero is waiting for these. I must hurry. Thomas pumped his pistons and puffed down the track. Hero was waiting for Thomas. So, my good friend, here are my flowers. I'm sorry, Hero. You will be late, I know. But from these flowers, Farmer Trotter will have the best honey on Sodor. The two friends smiled. It had been a very busy, buzzy day. Playtime. All the engines on the island of Sodor are very happy. They are all pleased to work on Sir Topham Hatt's railway. There is always something new and exciting to look forward to. Like the day the famous singer Alicia Botti came to give a concert at the town hall. Thomas met Percy at the washdown. His boiler bubbled with pride. Hello, Percy. I have a very special special. I must meet Alicia Botti at the docks. Then I have to take her straight to the town hall for a grand concert. That's exciting. I have news too. Someone else is arriving at the docks. Thomas was puzzled. Charlie, the new engine. Thomas hadn't heard about Charlie. What's so special about Charlie? He's the favorite engine of the mainland controller. Everyone says he is the most fun engine ever. Even more fun than you, Thomas. Percy chuffed cheerfully away. Bumpers and buffers. I don't think any engine is more fun than me. And Thomas puffed off to the docks, his wheels whirring with worry. Thomas collected Alicia Botti at the docks. Miss Botti looked very grand. I'm pleased to be traveling with you, Thomas. Thomas's pistons popped with pride. Then he saw Charlie. Charlie's smaller than me, and he certainly doesn't look more fun than me. 
Hello, are you Thomas? Yes, I am. I'm Charlie. I've heard a lot about you. You have? The engines on the mainland say you're even more fun than me. Thomas was surprised. Then, Sir Topham had arrived. Thomas, Charlie has a busy first day. Edward has broken down. Charlie must pick up Edward's freight cars of seats from the steamworks. Then he has to collect ice cream from the dairy and red carpet from Knapford Station. If Charlie needs help, I'm sure you will look after him. Yes, sir. Yippee! Want to come with me? Why? It'll be fun. Sorry, I'm busy. I heard you were a fun engine. Maybe you're not fun at all. Thomas didn't like being told he was no fun at all. I'll come with you to the steamworks, and then I'll take Miss Body to the town hall. I'm sure I have plenty of time. So Thomas steamed slowly towards the steamworks, and Charlie followed behind. Thomas chuffed carefully to a junction. Miss Botty smiled sweetly from her passenger car. Charlie pulled alongside. This isn't fun. I'll show you fun. <laughs> Thomas couldn't let Charlie be more fun than him. He pumped his pistons, bubbled his boiler, and fizzed his firebox. The race was on. Thomas and Charlie roared and raced. Their funnels were fiery. They were soon red-faced. Alicia Botti could not believe her eyes. My goodness me, this is a surprise. I thought Thomas was steady and slow. What thrills and what fun on the way to my show. The engines were laughing. The race was such fun. You're quick and you're speedy, but I'm number one. With a whoosh and a whoosh, the two engines pulled into the steamworks. Steady, boys. Who is your friend, Thomas? Charlie. He's new. I'm fun! And I'm Alicia Botti. <gasps> Miss Botti, it is an honor to have you visit our steamworks. Kevin! Sorry, boss! And while Charlie was coupled up to Edward's flatbed, Miss Botti sang to the steamworks. <laughs> Then it was time to go. You are fun, Thomas. Let's go to the dairy. Thomas knew he should take Miss Botti straight to the town hall. But he didn't want Charlie to think he wasn't fun. I'm sure I still have time to get Miss Botti to the town hall. So Thomas and Charlie left for the dairy. Soon, the two engines came to a junction. Let's puff down there. We can't. That's a bumpy track. But it'll be fun. Thomas wanted to be fun, so he followed Charlie down the bumpy track. Thomas and Charlie bounced and bumped. Ooh. Alicia Botti <laughs> juddered and jumped. And the couplings jiggered and jiggled looser and looser. At last, Thomas and Charlie pulled up to the dairy. That was fun! <laughs> And this is even more fun. We must go, Miss Body. You mustn't be late for the concert. Bye-bye. If you were a really fun engine, you would race me to Knapford. Thomas knew he was late, but he wanted to be really fun. Just one last race, Charlie. Thomas and Charlie thundered and roared. Thomas thought he had never puffed so fast. I'm first. Let's race again. Then Gordon whooshed past. He was huffing grandly. He was taking Sir Topham Hat to the town hall. Thomas gasped. <gasps> I'm late. I must whoosh like the wind to the town hall. Thomas pumped his pistons, and he chuffed away quickly in a cloud of steam. I mustn't be late! I mustn't be late! Then there was trouble. Thomas didn't know that his couplings had unhooked. Thomas raced on to the town hall, alone. Thomas steamed to a stop. His cheeks were redder than James's shiny coat. Here I am, sir. 
Sir Topham Hatt looked hard at Thomas. Here you are, Thomas. But where are Annie and Clarabel? And where is Miss Potty? Thomas felt terrible. He had been having fun when he should have been really useful. I'm sorry, sir. I've lost them. Sir Topham Hatt boomed. Then you had better go and find them. Thomas puffed to a junction. He had looked for Annie and Clarabel, but he couldn't find them anywhere. Then Charlie chuffed up. He was on his way to the town hall. Hello, Charlie. I've lost Annie and Clarabel and Miss Body. The couplings must have come loose on the bumpy track and snapped when we were racing. Don't worry, Thomas. I have a good idea. What's that? We'll have a race. Whoever finds Annie and Clarabel first is the number one fun engine. Thomas was stern. He didn't think that was a good idea. No, Charlie. This isn't the time for fun. This is the time for being really useful. I have a very important job to do. And Thomas huffed away. Thomas chuffed carefully. He was very worried. Then Thomas heard singing. He smiled from buffer to buffer. That's Miss Body singing. Hooray! Thomas found Miss Body by the bridge. He had never heard anything as beautiful as Miss Body singing. Miss Body must go. I'm sorry I kept you waiting. And Miss Body cheerfully waved goodbye as the crowd clapped and cheered. Thomas puffed to the town hall with Annie and Clarabel. Sir Topham Hatt was cross. At last, Thomas, you've made Miss Botty very late. Not at all, Bertram. Thomas has made me very happy. I've had the ride of my life. So many people to sing to, and such fun. That made Thomas smile, and so did his fun friend Charlie. Thomas and the pigs. There are lots and lots of farms on the island of Sodor. There are farms with sheep. There are farms with cows. There are farms with goats. Thomas likes visiting all the farms, but his favorite farm of all was Farmer Trotter's pig farm. Thomas liked their curly tails and the funny noises they made. Thomas liked to visit Farmer Trotter's pig farm as often as he could. One day, Thomas was watching the pigs roll in the mud. Farmer Trotter was happy to see Thomas. Hello, Farmer Trotter. Hello, Thomas. I have some very special news. One of my pigs is going to have piglets today. Thomas was excited. I can't wait to see them. I need some soft straw for the piglets. I'd like you to go to Farmer McCall's right now to collect it. He will be waiting for you. Thomas was happy to help. Yes, Farmer Trotter. So Thomas chuffed cheerfully away with his empty flatbed. On his way to Farmer McCall's, Thomas thought about the pigs. I'm sure the piglets will like the soft straw. I wonder if there's anything else they like. Thomas puffed up to the dairy. He saw Percy. Thomas told Percy all about the piglets. How exciting! I wish I could see them, but I have to deliver this milk. Thomas looked at the milk churns. An idea flew into his funnel. I'm sure the piglets would like some milk. May I have some? Of course you can, Thomas. So the milk churns were loaded onto Thomas's flatbed. Thank you, Percy. I must go. Farmer McCall is waiting for me. And he steamed away. Thomas felt pleased. I wonder what else the piglets might like. Then Thomas saw James. James was at an orchard. 
The trees were full of juicy red apples. Hello, James. Hello, Thomas. Thomas told James all about the piglets. The piglets will soon be born. I must collect some soft straw for them. I wish I could see the piglets, but I have to deliver these boxes of apples to the village. Thomas looked at the juicy red apples. I'm sure the piglets would like some juicy red apples. May I have some? Of course you can. So Thomas's flatbed was loaded with lots and lots of juicy red apples. Thank you, James. I must go. Farmer McCall is waiting for me. Thomas chuffed quickly away. He felt very pleased. I wonder what else the piglets might like. Then Thomas saw some children. They were collecting shiny brown Hello, chestnuts. Thomas. Hello. Thomas told the children all about the piglets. They were very excited. <laughs> I'm sure the piglets would like some shiny brown chestnuts to eat. Please, may I have some for them? The children were delighted to give Thomas some of their shiny brown chestnuts. Thank you. I must go. Farmer McCall is waiting for me. And Thomas puffed away. Bye. He felt even more pleased. At last, Thomas chuffed to Farmer McColl's farm. Farmer McColl was waiting. He was cross. Thomas, you're late. Where have you been? I'm sorry, Farmer McColl. I stopped to collect some milk, some juicy red apples, and some shiny brown chestnuts for the piglets. Farmer McColl looked at Thomas's flatbed. He saw the milk, the juicy red apples, and shiny brown chestnuts. Your flatbed is full. You have no room for straw now. Fizzling fireboxes. I didn't think about that. I hope the piglets will like the milk, the apples, and the chestnuts just as much as straw. I must puff straight back to Farmer Trotter's. The piglets will be born soon. So Thomas pumped his pistons and chuffed quickly away. Thomas pulled up at the farm. Farmer Trotter was waiting. He looked at Thomas's full flatbed. He was surprised. Thomas, where's the soft straw? I thought the piglets would like these things just as much as straw. No, Thomas. Piglets need soft straw, and they're about to be born. Thomas felt very silly. I'm sorry. I'll empty my flatbed, then I'll puff back to Farmer McCall's as fast as I can. I must get the straw. There can be no delay. The piglets will need it by the end of the day. Thomas saw Percy at the water tower. Thomas, I know something else the piglets would like. I'm sorry, Percy. I can't stop. Bye, Thomas. I must get the straw. There can be no delay. I've no time for chatter along the way. Next, Thomas saw James at a junction. Hello, Thomas. I've been thinking about the piglets. I'm sure they'd like... I'm sorry, James. I can't stop. I must get the straw. There can be no delay. I've no time for chatter along the way. Thomas whooshed and he whooshed. He huffed and he puffed until he arrived at Farmer McCall's farm. It was late. Hello, Farmer McCall. Now I have plenty of room for the soft straw for the piglets. Could you load it right now? Of course I can, Thomas. Thank you, Farmer McCall. I must hurry. Thomas's pistons pumped and his axles ached. I must puff fast. There's no time for delay. The piglets need straw by the end of the day. At last, Thomas arrived at Farmer Trotter's pig farm. It was now nearly nighttime. Thomas saw that the pigs had gone. <gasps> Cinders and ashes. I'm too late. 
You're just in time, Thomas. I need that soft straw right away. Farmer Trotter unloaded the straw from Thomas's flatbed. And he took it away to make a nice soft bed for the piglets. The piglets have just been born. Thomas was delighted. Bubbling boilers! Look how small they are and how sweet. Thomas could see the piglets really like the soft straw. Aw, that little piglet is looking at me. I think I'll call him Thomas. Thomas was so happy, his axles tingled and his boiler bubbled. <laughs>